All right, welcome back to the Combine. Frank Frangie along with the general manager, Trent Balky, who just did his podium thing. How you doing? How are you? Good, good Frank. That's like getting your tooth pulled without Novocaine <laughs> over there, but doing good. You weren't anticipating all the Harbaugh questions, huh? No. no. <laughs> yeah, well, actually I was. Yeah, <laughs> you sure you kind of knew they were. Hey, um, tell me about the Combine. Uh, you come every year. I come every year. I was telling you before you went on, it's crazy here. What do you game? Watching players, talking to players, medical? I guess it's all of the above, but, I mean, what means the most to you when you come here? Well, that's changed over the years. You know, it's getting more and more restrictive uh, to access to players. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get short segments with guys. Uh, they're a lot more schooled up than they used to be, whether it's on the mental test, whether it's on the interviews themselves or the physical testing. It's There's just such a process to, that these guys go through now in preparation for the for this combine that years ago they didn't. They came in, they were they were kind of raw. Right, right. You know, now they're, they're schooled in every aspect of it. So I think you get a little bit less than you used to, or quite a bit less than you used to get, but it's there's still value. Yeah, they're prepared. I get that. I get that. Now let's talk about your football team a little bit. You said something in your postseason presser in Jacksonville that really stood out to me. Toughness, toughness in the trenches. That that was an area, it's the first thing you identified. Yeah. Tell me about that. How, do you fix that with new players? Do you fix that with players getting older? Tell, to talk about that, because I, I agree with you. I thought that was kind of the thing. Well, there's a, there, you know, we talked about when we first took over in this organization that we had to, you know, our, our identity had to be, you know, we wanted tough-minded, physical, uh, aggressive you know, football players, smart football players, disciplined guys, and that hasn't changed. And, and we've got a good group of guys. Uh, we didn't play up to our standards. Uh, you know, we've talked about that. Coaches openly address that. And there's things that we've identified that we need to fix. Uh, you know, it's so we're going to continue to do that, and we're going to look at all aspects of, of it, play, each, each uh, player specifically, uh, what we're asking them to do, uh, the whole nine yards. You know, we've had some great discussions, uh, the personnel staff and the coaching staff, over the last couple of weeks just on what exactly that looks like. You know, and we, we know we need to add to the room. We know we need to get more competitive in there. Uh, but we, there's other things we can do to help the process as well. When you – you made another comment that stood out. When it's one thing to get to being competitive, the harder step is getting competitive to being a championship team. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, yeah. but, but that's the hard one. And you have a good team, right? So when you're close and you're in your window – do you, do you sign more free agents? Do you try and create more cap room? Does it, is, it, is it that black and white? What do you do? Well, I think you got to look at everything. You know, we were 8-3, and three, and, and one game away from being number one in the AFC for seeding purposes, and then we kind of lost it. Yeah. You know, we went five and we lost five of our last six games, and obviously we finished one game out of the playoffs. Huge disappointment, and when you go through with something like that, you, you You'd be making a huge mistake to be, jump to any conclusions too quickly. Yeah. You got to let it process. You got to you got to sit back and say, okay, why? It's never one thing. There, there, it's a multitude of things, and you got to assess each level of, of what that what that looks like. You know, and, and Coach and I and, and the staffs have had some great conversations. Like I said, in terms of how are we going to address that and what it's going to look like, and for us to share that plan at this stage doesn't do us any good. But we we know what we're doing. We know what we need to do, at least in our minds. And now we just got to go execute the plan. Let me ask you about some specifics. Obviously, you can't negotiate in the media and let and show your hand. I get that. But update me on at least how you feel about the Josh Allen thing. Everyone's asking the question. You're getting yeah. asked it all the time. But it's a big deal. It, it, how do you feel that thing's going? Well, it's ongoing. You know, anytime you're talking about the doing a deal with a marquee player, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of factors involved. And, you know, we're to, I have ongoing discussions with Joel. In fact, I'm meeting with him, his agent, here in the next couple hours just to have another Good. chat. You know, and, and there's going to be back and forth like there is in every negotiation. And you're just trying to find a common ground. And if you can reach a common ground, my, my goal is, our goal as an organization is to reach a common ground. Is that likely in the next 24 hours for you? You know, I, I don't know. I don't think either side knows at this point. But we got to work together. we got to get to the table. And that's the only way it's going to get done. The goal, I would think, for, all, for both sides, 
get it done before you have to involve the tag or anything else. Right? I mean, that's, it may not happen, but that, that's both sides' goal. Is that a safe guess? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're always trying to get things done sooner rather than la- later. Yeah. It helps us as we move forward in our planning and our, you know, because it does affect the salary cap. But if it doesn't get done, it's, it's not an end all either. Uh, we, we're going to work diligently with them to try to get something done and, and hopefully get it done as qu- sooner rather than later. How do you feel, Trent, about Calvin Ridley and trying to keep him, if at all possible? Obviously, there's a lot. We all know that we all know the possibilities. The second, the third, we've all we've been through that. But how do you feel about where you are there? Well, we like Calvin, obviously, and and Calvin and I sat down in my office uh, two, three days ago. Okay. He came in, and we just had a heart to heart, you know, and, and love Calvin. You know, and, and he's so passionate about the game of football. And Trevor and, and him, are, we're starting to build a little bit of synergy as the season went on. And it's only going to get better as we move forward. So we're going to do what we can in that area as well. You've got a lot of good players that are under contract, but that are they cost a lot of money. <laughs> they do. Cam Robinson costs a lot of money. Sean costs money. They're good players. Uh, and you've been through this a thousand times. But how do you deal with that in your mind? You don't want to let go of a good player. you got to create the dollars, right? Take me through the process. Well, it's, it's tough because you, you, get, you get attached to these players as well. You know, and so you got to put the emotional side away because they give so much to the organization. You know, every one of these guys gives, gives everything they have to, to hopefully winning a championship. And there's sometimes when, you know, you can't please them all financially. It's impossible. You know, you got young guys coming in that eventually are going to need contracts like Trevor and Tyson and Andre and all these guys walk. You know, you got a group of guys that are ascending, and then you got a group that's, that's there and making it. And you can't make them all happy financially. There's a cap, and the cap is real. Now, you can push some money and do some things, but at some point you got to make tough decisions. And I think that's where we're at with this offseason. There's going to be some tough decisions that have to be made. When does that happen? When, when do you, I mean, obviously we know when the league year starts, but I mean, in your mind, is it now? Do you go right up to the league year starting as a GM? What's the timetable? You try to, if you are going to move on from a player, you try to be upfront and honest with them. And, okay. you know, you don't hold them to the, to the, bar- the barrel of their head. Yeah. You know, you, you just can't do that. You got to be for- forthright with them. Uh, and, and that's how we're going to operate. You know, we're going to, we've got some decisions that we're going to need to make. We're, we're talking through this week to, to see where things shake up with some of these discussions. Uh, but then we're going to have to make decisions. So it'll be within the next week or so we're going to have to, those, those plans will be unveiled to the public. Uh, you talked a little bit about after Ryan Nils got hired about a scheme change. And Doug said, listen, there may be a scheme change, but in this day and age it's not that dramatic. It'll look different, he said. Is there going to be a scheme change defensively? Did you want that? Well, I think what Coach said, I mean, so much of what we play in this world nowadays is, is four-man front, four-man surfaces yeah. and, and nickel coverage. Yeah, 70% nickel of the time, dime, probably, yeah. you know, So 70 75% of the time you're in that anyway. So regardless of you build the, out of a 30 package, you know, from a personnel perspective yeah. or out of a 40, the bottom line is you're playing the same stuff 75% of the time, 70, 75% of the time. So, you know, it's going to look a little bit different, but the the, the overriding uh, from a personnel perspective isn't going to change very much on what we're, type of players we're looking for. Offensively, how did you think Luke Fortner played? How did the interior of your line play? Are you still confident in a lot of that group? Yeah, there's there's confidence, but we got to get better. You know, and and you know, we all have to own what we have to own in this. You know, we didn't run the ball well enough. You know, and, and you know, like I said earlier, you're trying to make these rooms as, as competitive as possible. Luke started every every game since he's been a rookie. You know, so there's a lot of experience at that position that he has. There's things that he has to do better. There's things that all of us have to do better. And uh, we've been very honest and forthright with players, with ourselves, on what that looks like. You know, so again, it comes back to competition. How competitive can we make those rooms so that everybody has to take one step forward or two steps forward? Nobody's going to be allowed to stay stay the same. Status quo doesn't work because it wasn't good enough. We finished 9-8. and eight, We were out of the playoffs. So something's got to give, and we've got to get better. And we all know that. 
I thought Trayvon took a nice step. Did you think that? Tell me, what did you think? Yeah, I think Trayvon's progress, his development is what we expected it to be. Yeah. You know, we knew what we were getting when we drafted him with the first pick overall two years ago. You know, he hadn't played a lot of football. He hadn't done a lot of the things that we were going to ask him to do at the, at the NFL level, especially on his feet, playing in space, setting edges from the two-point. You know, he played a lot of four technique in, in college. So there was going to be a developmental curve for him, and I think you saw it from year one to year two. I think you're going to see it even more from year two to year three. Is he a better player with his hand on the ground? I'm over. I just, I'm overly simplifying it, I suppose. But is he? Well, he's such a talented player. What he allows you to do is mi- look for matchups. Yeah. Right. And I think you'll see that more. And again, I'm not the coach. I don't scheme. Yeah. But I think you're going to see him move around the the, the formations a little more and uh, try to look for matchups a little bit more aggressively. But I don't know that. You know, I, I just envision that that's the direction we're headed with him. Final thing or two. It's hard, it's hard being a GM. It's hard. <laughs> you, you win, you're the greatest. You lose, same with the coach. You lose, everyone's mad at you. Well, it's hard being a fan. Yeah, it's you know, hard being it, a fan. Isn't it? it is because you don't have as much control yeah. as you want over the situation, and I understand that. You know, we've got a great fan base, Frank, and, and you know, I appreciate their passion. You know, so when they lash out at me for the for decisions that are made or, or the record, I get it, you know, and, and I wouldn't want it any other way. It's the, it's the, it's the job we, do, you know, we live with and the responsibility we bear. So I'm good with all that. I get it. I appreciate that, and I, and I do appreciate that. Final thing, where's your roster in terms of where it needs to be to be a championship team? How far? We're, we're not there. We're not where we need to be, but we're getting closer. You know, and this off season is an important off season. You know, I felt we would, you know, when we took this thing over, I felt like year two we could push for a playoff spot. We did that. I wasn't expecting the, the, and I don't think any of us were expecting us to fall back, but we did. And I think if we use it the right way constructively and we really look at why, the whys of, you know, how we ended up at 9-8 and eight and one game out of the play, we're going to be a better organization for it, and I look forward to being a part of that. Trent Balky, the general manager of the Jacksonville Jaguars. That was great stuff. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Frank. Back in a moment.